Hey boys and girls, it's week eight of art class. Wow, we are gonna do part two of our monster creature drawings. So last week we drew these super cool characters that have a surprise on the inside, inside their mouths, on the inside middles of their bodies. And remember, when we opened them up, it revealed that surprise. This week, we are gonna use these drawings as our inspiration to make a second version of the same thing. This was kind of like our sketch drawing. And now this week, we are gonna make it in real life with paper. Wow! The fun thing is, whatever body parts are on the inside of your puppet this time, become a cool addition to your character's body. So here's my blue monster from last week, whenever he's closed, and you can see his arms sticking up in the air, which is kind of fun. And this time, when I open him up, dun, da, 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 he gets revealed, he has his polka dotted arms, and of course, that delicious donut is on the inside. So we are gonna use these as our inspiration to know what in the world to make out of our cup paper this week. If you didn't have a chance to make one of these last week, if you missed step, if you missed part one, go back, Check out part one monster drawings right now. Do that and then come back to us. This part's gonna be very confusing without doing the drawing first to learn how it works. To make these awesome paper monsters this week, boys and girls, you need some different supplies that we haven't used yet. First, you need construction paper. That's this super beautiful colored paper that you got in your art kit from school. I would grab yourself one of every color to get started. And because we're doing cut paper things this week, you also need a pair of scissors. So grab yourself a pair of scissors that you feel safe using. And finally, this week we need our glue bottle. You each got a glue bottle in your art kit from school, so grab that Elmer's glue bottle. Or if you have a glue stick and you would prefer to use that, that works for me too. Now, along with learning how to make collage projects this week out of cut paper, we are also doing some skill building. Our first skill that we're going to work on this week is our observation, using our eyes to see different simple shapes in our drawings and then turn those into shapes that we can cut out. So using our eyes and observing is very important this week. Our second skill that we are gonna work on this week is our cutting skills. So using scissors carefully and properly to make nice, even, straight, and smooth cuts on our papers. That's how we're going to get our really cool details. And then last but not least, a skill we are going to make sure we learn how to do this week is proper gluing. Because gluing can be a huge mess with glue all over our fingers and all over the tables. So we need to make sure we're using our glue bottles properly. First opening and closing them, getting the glue out, and then putting just enough glue on our papers so that we can be successful. Once you have those art materials, your paper, glue, scissors, and a pencil. Meet me right back here and I will show you how to translate your drawing into a physical 3D work of art. All right, all right, we are ready to transform some paper into a super cool pop-up style creature. So if you did our art assignment last week, you made a drawing of a small little tiny monster that then had a surprise, ta-da, inside. I'm actually gonna work from this one. I made this with Miss Taxi Yahoo's class, actually. So shout out to Miss Taxi Yahoo's class, what's up? So I'm gonna use this as my inspiration this week. We have our construction paper. I have a whole tray of scraps here that I'm gonna use. We have our Elmer's glue bottle and our scissors. If you also have a glue stick, fabulous. Your life might be easier. Um, if not, if you're a glue bottle person, just make sure the top is cleaned off, that you've actually opened it up, and that you listened for your glue bottle to breathe. If it can't breathe like mine, you close it back down. And you can see there's tons of dried glue there. I'm going to pick all that dried glue off and then reopen it. There's a space. That's how I know it's open. And then I check for it to breathe. 
fabulous. It's ready to go. So um, boys and girls, to get started doing our three-dimensional pop-ups of our drawings, choose one color that will be your main monster's body shape. Now I made this monster hot pink. I don't actually have hot pink paper. Um, so I'm gonna make them purple instead and that'll be awesome. So I'm gonna take my first piece of paper. I'm gonna move everything off to the side to start um, and I'm just gonna work with my one piece of paper first. Now you might need to break down your creature into multiple shapes. Have your paper opened up and then if I look here, the main shape of my creature is an oval. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw my oval right on my piece of paper. And I am gonna try to make it a little bigger than what I see there. Um, I want mine to be larger, so I'm gonna really fill it up and make it extra big. And then I'm gonna cut it out. So what I'm gonna do first, boys and girls, is just find all the basic shapes of my creature and cut those things out. Now, I wanted to have the same um, surprise effect, so I'm gonna fold this shape just the same way I folded this white piece of paper. So I'm gonna take my monster's body and prepare him and get it ready. So I'm gonna fold it halfway down, fold that in half, just laptop style, but now it's just a monster body laptop, and then half up again exactly like I did with my white paper, okay? And then from there, I'm gonna start cutting out and creating these things that I see on my monster. It's just like I'm drawing, but this time I'm drawing in paper. So I'm just gonna start creating my creature um, just like how I see it here. I always like to trace my shapes on my paper as I draw them. And to make sure things get big enough, you can even overlap and lay your pieces right on top so you can kind of eyeball and get an idea of how big these things can be. Now one trick, boys and girls, if you're cutting small things, sometimes it's helpful to cut around it easily and release your small shape from your big paper. Then when I cut it, I don't have all that huge paper getting in my way. I just have a tiny piece of paper to work with. And to do little things like eyelashes, instead of cutting each little eyelash individually, I'm just gonna make some fringe and then cut it all out, catching it in my fingers. And then look, I have all these little eyelashes. So before I glue stuff, boys and girls, I like to cut a bunch of things out so that I can cut a bunch and then glue a bunch. Boys and girls, I wanna make two antennas coming out of my monster that are the same. I want it to be symmetrical. So instead of cutting, drawing, and cutting out two individually, I can fold my paper and make the same thing twice. So I'm gonna take a scrap of paper, Okay, I want my antenna to be kind of big. There's plenty of space on this scrap for me. And I'm gonna fold my scrap of paper in half. So I have two layers of purple. Anytime you wanna make two of the exact same thing, take a piece of paper, fold it in half. Now I'm gonna draw my antenna shape. Now with my paper folded in half, two layers there, I'm gonna hold real tight. It's small, so I'm gonna release it, hold it tight and now I'm gonna cut it out. If you want two of the exact same thing, now I'm making it a little bit bigger than my drawing and that's okay. Have two pieces of paper overlapped and then you'll see not only do I have one antenna, but I have two and they're actually exactly the same. I can always flip one over and now they are symmetrical from each other. Ah! Cool, now that I have all the details on the face that I need, I'm gonna glue them down. Remember, when we glue, we glue dot, dot, not a lot. Little bits of glue, not a ton. And then the other thing with my antennas, I want them to stick out the top, but I'm actually gonna glue them behind my main head shape. I don't want the edge of my paper to be on the front, I'm gonna glue it behind. Right, face is done. I have a little extra glue blobbing out from where I just put a swipe and then laid my eyelashes in, but that will dry as long as I'm careful. 
Now, boys and girls, you can do the same thing with your bottom pieces. What else do you need to add? Now, I have these cool tentacle bits coming out of my monster, so I'm gonna make tentacles just like how I made the top bits. I can cut out individual circles, or if you even have a hole puncher, you can use a hole puncher to cut out circles too. So now that you finish the top part, just like how when we drew it, drew it, do the bottom part next. The top of my head and the bottom of my body match my original drawing pretty close. I can change and add some other details later if I want to. Now it's time to open up and do the inside. Oh boy. So to do this part, boys and girls, remember, we wanna hide things inside our mouth. So my suggestion to you is draw a little line in pencil for yourself on your actual physical piece of paper so you know where that overlap line is and not to go below it. And girls, to figure out how big I want this to be, I lay my piece of paper next to it. I'm laying the edge of my paper up against my crease right up there. And then I can see, I can kind of measure with my body, I can measure with my finger that it should be about that wide. Cool, make a little mark. And then I can see that it needs to come down to this line that I made for myself. It's really light for you on the screen probably, but I can see it there. So I'm gonna make a little mark. So I see just how big this needs to be. From there, I can just trace my mouth shape that I want and cut it out. So if I wanna be able to see the smile whenever I fold it, so he has a little bit of smile on the outside, I want, I want to glue this piece down just slightly above the curve or slightly above the fold. So I'm gonna take my piece of paper, and since this is a big piece that's going to fold a lot, instead of doing dots, boys and girls, we're gonna do outline lines that are about a finger width away from the edge that scoops around. Just one outline line. If you wanna put a little X in the middle, you can. That's plenty of glue. Now flip it over and line it up. So it just crosses over your crease at the top and doesn't go below that line you made at the bottom. Give it a massage. Very nice. Now once this is nice and dry, we can fold it and we'll see how it works. After I've put my mouth in place and got just the right size, then just like how we did the head and the, the bottom, add all of your cool details something look like it's popping out of your page. There are a few ways to do that. When you have some of your pieces in place and your mouthpiece is dry, you can start to fold it to make sure it works. So once it's glued and dried, you can refold that in half, give it a good crease where that mouth piece is, and then fold it back up. All right, so then your mouth will open and close just like your monster does, all right? Now, if you want to do something that pops out of your monster, or your creature, like a tongue or something coming out of the, the mouth or the arms, if you make something like a tongue, you could glue it totally flat on your paper. Now make sure you hide it so it doesn't show up here. You want it hidden. But if I want it to be three-dimensional and pop out, if I take my tongue and fold and just make a little bit of a tab like that, a little piece that's folded, and then if I put a little glue on that tab and only glue the tab down so it's underneath, and again, I'm keeping it below my fold and above my mouth, then when I open and close, it's hidden and then it's 3D to kind of wiggle all around. So to make my little monster pop out of here, or my little, to make my little fish pop out of here, I can give him an, a, a little accordion. So if I take a small piece of paper and just zigzag fold it back and forth, just like that, perfect. It's just a few zigzags is great. And I'm gonna put one dot of glue on one side of the zigzag 
and attach my fish to that zigzag, just like that. Then the other side of the zigzag, I'm gonna put one dot and then I'm gonna glue that zigzag right down where I want it. And really take some time, count to five, and hold it still. One. Oh, cool. So now, boys and girls, when my monster's mouth closes and opens, that little fish <laughs> is gonna be three-dimensional and pop out of the mouth. Fun! So, boys and girls, now that you know some fun tricks to make things 3D, to make them pop out, and to make multiples of the same thing by folding your paper in half before you cut. Now you're ready to go for it and make all of your awesome details. Remember, dot, 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 not a lot. Ta-da! I took some time and added some of my extra details. Some tiny little things. The more little details you add, friends, the cooler your monster is going to get. And I made all of my little fishies pop out with those three-dimensional zigzags. So then at the end, you can carefully fold up your monster and oh man, he's ready for his surprise. Blah, blah! I hope you guys had fun making your 3D versions of your pop-up drawings with your collage and cut paper styles. Please share them with me on Canvas. Take a picture. You can do a before picture and an after picture or just an after picture to show me how awesome your creature is. And I will see you at our next art class. Bye, friends.